Welcome to Drew Pearson Live. I am the original number 88, Drew Pearson, and we are looking forward to another edition, an exciting edition of today's show. My special guest is Mrs. All-Time Leading Rusher, Pat Smith from Pat and Emmett Smith Charities. She'll be with us. We'll also be talking with the mayor of one of the largest cities in the Metroplex, Mayor Brian Lowmiller of McKinney is with us today as well. And some of my friends from Cafe Momentum are going to tell you about the great event they got coming up and all the good things going on with Cafe Momentum. Dr. G is here with us. Paul Southen is with us. And they'll be joining us later in the show. But first, here's your Dallas Sports Report. Your Dallas Mavericks season has officially come to an end. Oh, after the Mavericks dropped Game 5 to the Rockets on Tuesday, 103 to 94. The depleted Mavs lineup simply didn't have the answer for the duel of Howard and Harden, with Howard averaging a double-double and Harden putting up 30 points a game. The Mavs will have a long offseason to regroup and retool for next year, but make no mistake about it, this team still has championship aspirations and an owner who will do anything to win. So we'll see what happens next year because it should be exciting. Big news comes as the Texas Rangers make a deal to bring back controversial outfielder Josh Hamilton. Hamilton starred for the Rangers from 2008 to 2012, winning an MVP and helping the team reach two World Series before being booed off the field in his final game. With minimal risk and uh, Hamilton's sheer potential, the Rangers come out on top with this deal, however. Owing a mere $7 million of Hamilton's $125 million contract, over the next three years. And the 2015 NFL Draft is officially underway, and we've been working hard to bring you the best possible coverage, which is why I'd like to announce that next week's show will be the first ever Drew Pearson Live Draft Special. Myself and a panel of experts will be breaking down the draft round by round, giving your grades and our grades for the Cowboys and others, and you'll not want to miss that, I'm sure. Sports Week is up next. Ty Walker from 1310 The Ticket is in the house, and he'll join me at the Sports Deck in a minute. So don't go anywhere because Drew Pearson Live is about to start right about now. Hut, hut! Pearson Live is brought to you by Whataburger. The Honey Mustard Whata Chicken Club is a tangy twist on a tasty classic. Enjoy it while you can, only at Whataburger. I've made my way over to the sports desk where I'm joined by Ty Walker from 1310 The Ticket. Ty, thanks for being with us. Good and we got a lot of sports talk Absolutely. to talk about, so let's get right to it. Absolutely. Of course, first of all, we got to talk about the Mavericks and uh, losing their final game to Houston. Uh, but they really never stood a chance to win that series. Uh, did you think that in your mind, that they had a chance? You know, a lot of people going into it kind of gave them a shot. Yeah. They, they a little momentum going into the playoffs, but they were a seven seed going against a two seed with a lot of talent. And then you go in and then you have the Rondo situation. Mm -hmm. uh, Chandler Parsons going down. Uh, that depleted a, a team that was, you know, pretty tight already. Right. And, and so it, it made it really tough, even tougher. Yeah, and they tried to do what they could to offset those losses. Uh, J.J. Barea probably had the uh, series of his life, yep. and uh, he played well. And other guys stepped up as well. But it just wasn't enough against a Rocket team that seems destined to go further or deep into these playoffs. Very talented team. You, you saw that in that series against the Mavs, that it seemed like any time the Mavs were able to put a run together, uh, they had something to, to counter it, and it was uh, a lot of that three-point shooting, uh, the thing that did not work in the one loss that they had to the Mavs. In, in every other game, it worked. Well, you know, in uh, losing, uh, no one ever likes that, and it's always disappointing to end the season on a sour note, but in doing that, somebody's always to blame. You yeah. know? Uh, in this situation, who do you point the finger at for the most blame for this season this year? You know, I don't... There's a lot of blame to go, go around. Mm -hmm. People will maybe blame Mark Cuban because he did go out and try to bring in Rondo, a guy that has you know a very uh, a past that everybody knew about in Boston right. and thought maybe a change of scenery would help, and it did for spurts. Uh, you know, injuries hurt. I, I think Rick Carlisle over the last four years since the championship, he's done what he can 
with an ever-changing roster and I guess probably most fans will probably say, we'll, we'll look at the owner and say, mm -hmm. okay, you, now what? Now what do we do going forward? Right, and going forward, you know, they got 11 free agents on this roster. So going forward, it's going to be virtually a brand new team again. And now we're dumping this in the lap of Rick Carlisle to say, make something happen. It seems, I think he's probably gotten used to it by <laughs> yeah. now. It seems like every year he sees a lot of new faces. <laughs> right. And I think he's embraced the challenge, but I'm sure also he might get a little frustrated that he doesn't have that consistency there and he has to continually try to reformulate chemistry with these guys and right. so yeah it's going to be an interesting interesting offseason to see who exactly stays and who goes well I'm putting my name in the pot right now <laughs> I still got a jumper mark all right they could have used you give me a call if you need a outside <laughs> shot that plays no defense well you got that already <laughs> anyway <laughs> you defended perfectly. <laughs> right all right let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the uh, Rangers all making right. that deal to bring Josh Hamilton yeah. in your thoughts on that you know as a fan at first I was kind of upset because of the way he left right. and uh, kind of burned some bridges he said he had some uh, negative things to say about the fans here and the more I heard about the trade and the more I heard the the, uh, le the how good it was going to be for the Rangers right. that basically they're getting him for free that they've the Angels are so ready to get rid of him they're willing to take the whole almost all of that contract right. it's worth it I, I mean this team right now offensively is very bad and if he can give you anything you win right it, it gives the Rangers a spark you yes. know as far as I don't know if Josh is going to be that Josh Hamilton that he was before he right. left and got the big contract with the Angels. But just gives them a spark, I think, not only with the fans, but in that locker room as well. Yeah, I think it just it, it uh, excites a, a clubhouse that right now needs something to, to stir it up. And it's uh, because right now they're right at the bottom of the American League West and they've had their struggles offensively. They've had OK pitching. Uh, and maybe bringing him in, maybe he he recaptures some of that magic coming back here. Yeah, Nick Martinez, as far as pitching is concerned, has been a surprise, he's been and he's been the, the ace of that staff to this point. There's no question about that. Now, the NFL draft, we're going to have our draft special and right. analyze what everybody done on our next show, but... Going into that draft, did you see the Cowboys' need being running back, defensive end, cornerback, what? You could have seen just about any place. You know that they could have they could have added a guy. You know, even even at the offensive line, even though they've ever you know they've really stacked up offensive line draft picks of the last couple of years, you could have gone there. Uh, but I think yeah, running back after you you lose Demarco Murray to Philadelphia, going into the draft, you're like okay, you you need to get a guy in there that that the scouts think is maybe not a can't miss, but close to a can't miss. Yeah, well, quickly, uh, the Cowboys decided to lighten up the reins on Des Bryant, the, the other 88, <laughs> and I'm glad to see that because, you know, he's a pro. It's time to let him be a man now. And, it, you know, that kind of goes back to the Josh Hamilton thing. Mm -hmm. if you, you, uh, these guys at a certain age, you know, and they're still needing to be kind of uh, – I don't want to say babysit, but babysat, but uh, in this case, they're lo loosening the reins a little bit on Dez, and we'll see if at this point he's mature enough to handle that. Yeah, we'll see, and uh, <laughs> I think he is. Yes. I think he's learned his lessons, and he's a grown man now, so let him be a grown man. Absolutely. Ty Walker from the ticket. It's good to be Good here. stuff, man. Thank 13 you. 10 to ticket. You can catch Ty Walker on weekdays on the hard line from 3 to 7, right there on 13 10 to ticket. And when we return at DPL, our entertainment expert, Paul Salpin, he'll be sitting down with the talented duel of director and leading man from the new comedy, Helicopter Mom. You don't want to miss that. We'll be right back.